Well, what we have are, uh, you know, who's riding bikes, who's taking the water taxi, who's riding the bus. We have some of those numbers uh, tonight. They've been sort of building all week. And until really this afternoon's commute, the drive has actually been pretty good. And some of those numbers are quite surprising. Every day, the changes in the large construction zone at the south end of the tunnel are noticeable. But as fast as things are moving, we still have more than two weeks to deal with the lost capacity of Highway 99 and the viaduct, which carried nearly 100,000 vehicles a day. So let's look at some of the numbers as to what's going on. Consider the metro area's other highways. Overall, traffic is down. This is the kind of map that state transportation engineers produce. How many vehicles are traveling over the course of a day? Green boxes are good. On Monday, even I-5 was down as much as 11%. Even on heavier Wednesdays, where traffic in places was up, as marked in red, overall counts were lower. So where are we going? Let's take bikes. Coming out of West Seattle, bike traffic increased fourfold. On three of the city's main bike corridors Monday alone, over 7,200 riders. I've been riding it more because of the shutdown traffic, yes. You are? Yes. Cash Murray is one of those riders. You're really noticing it. I, I have noticed it, yes, yes. There's been a lot more bikers on the trail lately. The West Seattle water taxi is way up. More than 2,300 riders just on Wednesday. That's up 151% over the same day a year ago. Yesterday, Metro ran a record number of trips using its fleet of standby buses. 74 extra trips carrying 3,001 riders. Now, what those state traffic numbers really do not reflect are the peaks in terms of the rush hours themselves, which are coming earlier. We are seeing people being on the roads a little bit longer, maybe up to a half uh, an hour longer in some cases there. We're going to have to mix in tonight's numbers to see what that means. But in terms of alternate transportation, uh, meaning other than driving, the only agency that really doesn't seem to have any hard numbers here at all is Sound Transit. They're saying they're seeing things kind of typical like they normally would. That's about it. Anecdotally, when I talk to people riding the train, taking the bus, they say in some cases that's true. In cases of the train, some trains are higher, saying that there is capacity out there on some of the trains, particularly on the North Line. So we're hoping someday to get some numbers out of Sound Transit, since they're obviously one of the major players in this whole mix of alternate transportation. Live in Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.